Hey, we made it just in the nick of time. We made it. Uh, yes. Oh, and uh, my screen goes blank. Hold on a second. I just got to type in my password. There we go. So, yes, welcome to the live stream of consciousness. Uh, we made it just in time. It's Thursday, February 2nd. And uh, welcome back to the live stream of consciousness if you've been here before. And welcome for the first time if you're coming in. I had a, uh amazing experience with Jesse Howell from the Missing a Link podcast. And uh, some of his people might be coming in here because I got a couple of new subscribers there. I got this bell from Jilly. I was able to ring it like 10 times uh, during that interview. So that was all cool. That's my subscription bell. So if you're new here and you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, what's up, some people out there? What's up, Tommy? What's up, uh, Tammy? I mean, Tim. What's up? What's up, Ninja Kitty? How are you guys doing? Good to see you always here. Welcome to my happy place. Hopefully your happy place too. Um, it's been a crazy week. Uh, another adventure of life, right? Another week of life. And here we are again. Um, the live stream of consciousness is uh, always willing to talk about cool things with cool people. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that you enjoy it and don't feel like you're being preached to. I had an interesting experience. Uh, I think I talked about it last week. Uh, it kind of still went on a little bit this week with a friend of mine who has a, a podcast also and um, kind of, I guess, feels like uh, um, preaching or something here and, and claiming that I'm more enlightened than people or anything like that. And I'm just talking about trying to be happy and what energy means and all of these things. And so we had a misunderstanding, but, uh, you know, uh, he told me to go away. So I'm away. Here I am in my own happy place. Um, it's just interesting. I guess I'll have to figure out how to make that into a story uh, and tell you guys what happened there. But anyway, uh, I'm excited for tonight's conversation. Um, somebody who I know, uh, and I kind of forgot how how we met. I just knew I knew her for years. I guess we connected immediately, you know, that energetic thing, you know, you know, so feel like you've known someone and you're comfortable with who they are and you you just like love them off the bat. Um, and that's the case with my guest tonight. Um, I have uh, her name's Lisa Fazio. She is an artist. Uh, she's a psychic medium and uh, intuitive and amazing, amazing person. I'm going to br bring her on right now and I'm going to tell you guys the story of how we met and we'll experience it all together. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Hello. Hello. There you are. Look at that. So happy to be here. Thank you so much for asking me. So excited. Awesome. Yeah. Super excited to have you, and I love seeing you standing in front of your amazing artwork there. That's we have a photo cool. of you standing in front of it, right? Uh, we do. We have a bunch of things to go through, um, and uh, and that's one of them. So uh, I guess I guess we should tell the story before I get into the initiation of uh, live stream of consciousness with you. Um, so I think it was it was 2017 or so. Mm -hmm. um, and I was asked to do this uh, photo shoot to uh, bring awareness to endometriosis. Um, and if you don't know what endometriosis is, it's uh, a condition um, that women have that has largely gone kind of untreated uh, in the medical community. And there's a lot of controversy surrounding how it's been treated and how it's been ignored. Uh, I think a lot of progress has been made since 2017. Um, but probably more progress always needs to be made uh, in these kinds of situations. But so the, the photo shoot concept was the endometriosis warrior, the endo warrior. Uh, and I was invited to shoot these uh, beautiful, strong women who all have that condition. Um, and, and Lisa was there as well. Uh, she was there because she was going to be doing a painting of the resulting images. And I think, I don't know if that was, pre-planned or that just happened when you were there yes, yes and interestingly enough the person who invited me didn't uh when we started talking didn't realize that i was a survivor so it really oh, yeah no. it meant a lot to me to be a part of the group because these were a group of young women who were suffering still and i had um gone through it already so uh in walks mike i'm with this i'm going to this person's home i don't know anyone and i see mike very comfortably uh, photographing people, and I just felt very comfortable with you because I really could see that you loved what you did, and you were very respectful for everybody there. And 
being an artist myself, I can spot someone who really is really good at what they do. And the way you uh, pose the women and well, was very respectful in them. They were changing outfits and um, the, and the way they wanted to be portrayed. I felt that you were really good with that. And um, it was exciting wow, to be awesome. part of it. And the end results were beautiful. The photographing was beautiful. And I got yeah. to create something beautiful art from it. So yeah, I found it totally. Really Wow, I I really appreciate that. I don't think you ever said that to me. Um, I mean, again, we we hit it off right away, so we we knew we liked each other. We've said plenty of, uh, you know, compliments to each other, and and we totally respect. And it was a weird situation because, like, the, if anybody understands the photo shoot, the women were like kind of not half naked, but they really didn't have much on, and it was right. not very traditional in the photo shoot at all. So, right. um, yeah, I, I, we, two of us really clicked and, you know, there was a lot of, and people came from all over, right. They were from different States. Some people yep. Yep. And nobody knew each other, which was very cool. So yeah. Thank you. So yeah, it was, a, oh, it was an amazing experience. Uh, what's up? Arnie, welcome. Uh, so you'll have to post some pictures or something. Whatever uh, you yeah. Know. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually, before we get started, uh, I found, I dug up a bunch of stuff. Um, so let me share some photos real quick. Um, and I think I took a photo of you, but I never, I couldn't find it. But yeah, because I, I think, you know, there was a, never gets in the photo. So. <laughs> there was a photo that I, I uh, remembered that I couldn't find as well. But let me see if, where is this one? This is, uh, hmm, why can't I see this window in my share screen windows? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, nope, that was not the right one. <laughs> oh, bear with me for a second. Uh -oh, um, don't, don't show that one, Mike. <laughs> what is it? Uh-oh. No, no, that was, it was, the, it was, it's, it's the shoot, but it wasn't the oh, okay. photos right. that I wanted to share. Oh, you know what? It was a just different, a different tab. I didn't you could tell me anything. How would I even know? Uh, so, so I posted this on Facebook just a little while ago. Uh, Saying, oh, uh, you know, join, God, it's a side shot of me. Oh, wow. yeah. join me and, and you'll see a little bit of, of what this photo means. And I could not believe the hefty beard that I have <laughs> in this photo. I think that was the only time I ever grew my beard that big. But it really oh, it reminded me of so life and how life changes. And even, you know, even the person that I was, as, as much as you complimented me, it was a different person. You know what I mean? Back, it's five years ago at, at this point. And, um, you know, still know. base, base at the core, you know, I was, the, I'm the same person, of course, and, and my intentions and my vibration, um, but just much more uh, evolved. And I looked back at this and I just had so much fun looking at these photos. Uh, there's another photo. There was a, a videographer filming behind the scenes. These are some of the women who were all kind of getting dressed and made up and, and there's yeah, a photo of you I, that I found. I am, um, I am a survivor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This was, I didn't even know. I didn't even get like get makeup on. I didn't even know I was going to get photographed that day. I just get, went there as an artist. So yeah. That yeah. Was yeah. You were, you were hanging out and, and just kind of watching and, and we did a group shot and then we were like, Hey, let's get, let's get Lisa in here. Um, and then I'm not sure. Okay. So here's, I I went back in my Facebook and I was able to like just search my own profile for Endo Warrior, and I found our conversations. And we yes. actually had a, a private face group, Facebook group, yes. uh, that was talking back and forth. And so we were sharing all of these things. This was a quick comp I did in Photoshop uh, mm -hmm. of the images to send to you, just to kind of like start. These are the images ideas. that we use. Thank you. Yeah. Why do they all look like the right pose? Yeah, these are all the images that I merged together. Uh, right. um, I'm sorry, it's in my studio underneath stuff. I didn't think. No, that's all right. There you go. I have it here. Uh, and let me see if I could. Oh, it's, it's it's not easy to make big. Let me see if I can. No, I can't really zoom what in. What was nice is they wrote a really nice article about the whole uh, process that we did together. Yeah. yeah, it got published. And uh, and and even the whole photo shoot got published in a couple of places. And uh, yeah, it was just, again, it was just a really amazing experience. This was what I opened originally. And I was like, wait, that's not it. Cause I didn't want to get to the end Isn't before I the beginning. But Gorgeous. these were some of the results of the photos uh, that we did. Beautiful. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just, it was just an amazing, amazing experience all around. Uh, I'm so grateful for these things. And, you know, I do feel like this is of course, you know, made me part of who I am. You know, I was so grateful for this opportunity and and so inspired by the strength of these girls uh and what they were going through you know and uh that was one of the girls who was doing all the makeup for everybody um, mm -hmm. and
And it was just it was just such a great experience. It was a very nice thing to be a part of. So yes, thank you. That's and we that's how we know we're good people, you know. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh you've got Deborah out there, Lisa. That's gorgeous. Your painting and the and the gorgeous hey, Deb. too. Uh, awesome. And Girl. I see, <laughs> I see a, a lot of awesome people out there. Thank you guys all for coming. Um, I, I I still want to show, I do have a little video. Maybe we'll get to that in a little bit, but uh, I'm already 12 minutes in and I haven't initiated you at, into the live stream of consciousness. <laughs> okay. um, you know, I know you told me not to use any big words, so <laughs> I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to keep it, <laughs> keep it simple. But, um, but this is the live stream of consciousness and, and really what, sparked this for me was these conversations you know with other people but trying to get their perceptions as well and and grow this kind of collective idea of consciousness but um the question i always ask is what is consciousness what does consciousness mean to to you lisa um i think consciousness to me is more about being um in the present moment mm -hmm. um I think because as a psychic medium, I'm really conscious in more than one space, um, which actually really works for my advantage because I can do more than one thing at once. And so people will say, how do you do that? So I think I'm conscious in more than one space-time reality. That's cool. But I think the other part of it is the conscious, I mean, consciousness is to be conscious of what you're doing mm -hmm. um, for yourself and what you're doing for others. So I think that you have to realize that you're in a, reflective pool where whatever you do kind of has a rippling effect. So that's another way of looking at consciousness to me also. Mm -hmm. um, Great. And the whole premise is that um, we're all here to help one another, not to see through one another, but to see one another through. Mm. Um, oh, wow. I haven't heard that. That's great. Yeah. So I think that's why you and I connected is because we, we were helping one another through. And I think that's really, I look for people that I can bond that, are not really of ego, but to know that we're all mm. kind of on the same conscious plane, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I said I said that a couple times this week, you know, and I, and I often go back to it, and and that is similar to what you're saying. And we're all in this together, right? Whatever whatever this is, you know, we're all here together, and we all need to respect that the other people are here. You know, I think that's that's what helps me find compassion for people who, you know, I don't necessarily agree with, you know, I mean, it's exactly. It's, yeah. And I think you just have to learn to live in that space that um, there's constantly, a, let's say a friction or a difference. And in there is the beauty of still oneness at the same time, right? Because it, with darkness, there's light. Mm -hmm. um, just as like someone would come to me as an, an artist or an art teacher and say, does this look good? You know what I mean? What does that even mean? Is there even a definition of good and bad? You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Why? Why are you asking me? What do you think? You know, right. that's right. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're not harming someone else, you know what I mean? Like that's right. what. Oh, of course. Yeah, of different. course. Yeah. <clears throat> I love I love that answer, and I love I love that you talk about you know from your own experience. Um, experiencing consciousness in different places or in different, I guess, in different uh, realms, let's just say, you know, or different dimensions, I guess you could describe it in all those different ways. Uh, I really love that. That, but isn't that. But isn't that true? You talked about a oh, strong absolutely. Mindset, right? So mm -hmm. to me, the way I look at it is, you know, my full spectrum of where I've come from, you know, um, a little bit, I think I wrote in my little blurb, you know, growing up in a hospice home and realizing that uh, people are not permanent. You know, when you grow up, when you grow up, you're not going to go to Disney World. You're going to realize that death is really there. I had a hard time connecting to people and relationships because I felt, why bother? You're going to die anyway, kind of thing. Mm. And so I, I established my relationship with death and dying quite early, and I'm very comfortable with it. And I could actually right. see transition. It's just, it's just another form of energy. So if you look at it where you have conflict with someone and say, okay, so from a higher point of view, what contract did I have with this person? And um, on a long, on a scale of life of past, present, and future, how does that really lay out? Does it really matter? You know what I mean? Right, like, right, you know, right. what is it? It's only small, a small tidbit of what we're learning now in this one present reality, as opposed to the whole bigger picture of a whole. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Very insightful. Awesome. I love that. Um, yeah. And, and again, I, the reason I love that question is because the answer is ever expanding, you know what I mean? And you just kind of expanded it to, to the idea. We, we talk about it, uh, consciousness existing in layers or levels, but also I think realms and dimensions is another good way to describe that. 
Um, so thank you for that. That was awesome. See, no, no big words. No, no. Right, no, right. This, well, this the other thing I wanted to say also, I think people think consciousness also on a on a human level. Mm -hmm. So you have to remember that we're energy. So it's on other levels as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what about the consciousness of animals and plants and everything else? So everything has consciousness. Well, that's what I'm loving that about quantum physics and, and, you know, science is now kind of talking about things that cross over to that spiritual realm about, you know, everything has, everything has an energetic field, you know, these kinds of things can be measured with, with instruments and, you know, uh, everything is energy, you know, that's kind of what we talk about here all the time, you know, and understanding that even a conversation is an energetic exchange and respecting that you know what i mean is is how you navigate it and and have an easy time navigating it right it's much right. more difficult when you when you don't understand uh it's interesting also that you talk about uh death and and the fear of death because i just i was just having a conversation about that and i think for me uh you know like if, if there are two things that I can say were key to kind of helping me you know, be, be happy and, and live this kind of non-fearful life uh, was, was self-love was one, understanding what that meant and ex being able to experience it. Um, and, you know, not having a fear of death, like almost like, you know, like understanding that death is, you know, another phase of, of this right and this is just a three-dimensional phase of it and then you know it becomes... well, what are you actually fearing okay so so my my take on that is so i've had not one but two near uh, death experience one was drowned you know one actually both of them were drowning and um so one of them i was completely submerged underwater for, for several minutes and i was pulled up mm -hmm. and in that second i was able to see my whole life and then when i came out um I was, it's a funny, kind of a funny story. I was regurgitating water and we were on a rafting trip and all these Boy Scouts drafts went all under me, on top of me, woo, 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 and I was stuck under and everybody else had floated down and I was stuck underneath. And when I got pulled out, they were like, um, are you okay? And I'm like spitting water out and they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, um, I'm like, and they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, I think I'm okay. And they were like, and I went, looked at them and I said, I peed in my wetsuit. And they were like, well, you shouldn't have done that. And I'm like, yeah, well, I thought I was going to die. Like, what the hell would you think of that? And then I go to them, so where's the little dog on the side of the road that has, like, the hot chocolate, like you see in the commercial? And they're like, there is none. I'm like, well, what the hell? I'm going to go down the whole freaking thing? So I went to hypothermia. I had, um, they had to wake me up every hour because you can drown in your own fluid. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so in that moment, there is no fear, mm -hmm. right? There is no fear because, um, well, besides the fact that I was frozen, so... And, and I, I can tell you, go on and on of all kinds of weird. I've been hit by a car crossing the street. You yeah. have this whole flashing thing where, um, and at least it was a psychic also, because I'm able to see someone transition and know how much of yourself is in your body before you actually move out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, watching my, unfortunately, my dad pass last year, I was able to see his body ascend on front on top of him before he was actually completely removed wow um and i remember the aide being there and she was like crying and i said to her he's not there in there anymore and mm. it's fine like he's already moved over even right. pets, people who have been present when pets pass same thing when they give them the medication to put to sleep they're already ascending out of the space right. so there's really no fear in that last moment that's right. just something we as humans put in there um yeah yeah I, have to look, I don't know i don't know and then um there's the whole contract of how you do decide to leave i have another interesting story about death in there as well so my 105 year old neighbor she um was a trooper oh my god the stories i've had her live on facebook she's so funny anyway so obviously you know you're going to die you're 105 so i explained to her how you have a choice of how you're going to leave what your exit plan is going to be i told her at least from my point of view how i see it how it's channeled to me Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So she's listening to me. Now, remember, 105, born in whatever heck, 18, whatever heck she was born, 1918 or some crap, really. Right, right, right. So she says to me, um, so I explained it to her, and I said, you know, at the, at the last moment, you'll get to decide. So P.S., she's in the hospital. She's not doing well. I see her son has showed up. And this is a person who's never, for the last 20 years, she lived alone. She, I would come home, and she would be lifting up her garage door to go get a tool at 105. I'm like, what are you doing? 
Like, I can help you with that. She's like, I want to cut this one thing, a little Italian lady, right? <laughs> so she wouldn't let anybody help her. She made her own food. She did her own wash. She never wanted to have me. So here it is now. Her son comes in, and I go to him. So what's going on? He goes, oh, she's not doing well. You know, I told her that she's either going to have hospice come home or she's going to have to go to hospice. And I went, oh, that's interesting. An hour later, she passed. You know why? Because she decided she wow. didn't want to come that way. So you have a choice at any point of, at least for me, I feel for your exit. Absolutely. Yeah, no. Perfect. Yeah, that's I great. Feel like there's any, the fear is what you, you put into it. The only fear that we have, Mike, is the suffering. Nobody wants to suffer. Mm -hmm. so, I, yeah. I mean, you know, and we talk about that here too. Um, you know, the layers of kind of uh, illusion that we're coated with as we, as we grow up, you know, and then, you know, the ability to kind of be able to peel off those layers um, and, and, and what that's all about. Um, so the next question before we get into you and I want to see your studio and all the stuff, uh, the next question is, and it sounds like it probably was a young age. I think you may have even almost answered it already is, you know, do you remember a moment or I'm sure you have a story about when you realized that all of the things that society and school was teaching you was not necessarily a full picture of reality? Um, probably that's a great uh, question. I think my pivotal point was, um, it's going to sound crazy, but my life is crazy is when I was 12. Um, I think that's when I realized that grownups are full of shit. Um, they told you there was Easter bunnies and Santa Claus and all that crap. And it ironically was also the year my mother told me she was a recovered alcoholic. So mm. there was a lot of craziness going on in my house. And I just thought you guys are all a bunch of bullshit artists. And I, forgot to tell the other part that when my grand my grandmother was dying in the house when she died my family chose not to tell me where she went so as a five-year-old I went from room to room looking for her mm -hmm. and so I had a lot of suspicion that there was something going on there as well I mean you don't go every night to eat dinner with somebody for almost three years and then they disappear and assuming that a child doesn't grieve the same way you know doesn't really grieve a child under the age of 12 doesn't really grieve the same way but doesn't under, doesn't understand that somebody's missing so right. i just thought that they you know what i knew there was another part i kept thinking it was another part of the world so that's when things started to click in my head that you know something's not right there and then then when all the lies came in that's when i was like no mm -hmm. so i've always kind of been against the grain being an artist and being different and even um I could, you know, I could go on. I'm, 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 I'm 61, and my family still kind of sees me as an outcast. I gave birth mm -hmm. to my daughter at home. They really shunned me for that. They wouldn't speak to wow. me for six months. So I could go on and on. And the thing is, you know, if anybody knows me or follows me, knows that I really have an optimistic point of view. You can shoot sure. things to me, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make it funny, and I'm gonna make, and I'm gonna make it what I want to make it. You know, you can that's, tell me anything. That's great. That's great. Yeah, you, you, you know what? Do you do? Do you ever do stand up? I can see you doing stand up. <laughs> I should be doing stand up. I, I, you doing stand -up. Say I should be doing stand up. I should <laughs> be writing material out. I don't know. I'm really good at improv. When I go somewhere, I try to make it funny. I, right. I go to the hospital and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going into an MRI. This is like my spaceship or whatever. And then I'm taking usually <laughs> selfies with them. Uh, I did a funny thing in um, when I went to trip with my daughters. I was like, hey, we're going to Alaska. I heard all the guys are really cute. I'm going to take a picture with every cute single guy with you girls. So I would go, hey, you from Alaska? Are you an Alaska person? Let's take a picture with my daughter. And they're like, mom, we're rolling the right, rolling the right. So they did not appreciate that at all. So then we went to another trip to Italy, and they were like, mom, don't do that. I'm like, oh, F you. I said, I'm going to try to take a picture with as many Italian men as I could. Uh. So I would go up at a gas station. We would be on this trip, and, and it would be my goal to look around and see who could I get within three minutes of this pit. The hot Italian guy. And my daughter's like, Ma, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm gonna, I got up to 23 Italian men that took nice. me. I'd have to come in with a story. So to me, it's about really being present, finding something that you can connect with someone in the present moment and make it about and make it like fun. I mean, yeah. you can really make any situation crappy. Why not make it happy? What yeah. a great philosophy. Yeah. I you know, I always I say that too often. It's like if if people just went into situations with the mindset of what can I bring to this situation? not what can I get from this situation? You know what I mean? And, and it would just be, you know, like everybody would be so much more friendly and excited to see each other. And like you said, engage with each other. That's what I love about this, this platform. I say that pretty often, you know, it's like, yeah, you make it friendly, Mike, you make it like, again, when I saw you and met you, you were approachable. Not everybody's approachable. Do you know what I mean? You have but they to can be. 
<laughs> they can be, but they choose not to be. Right. So and, and I wasn't always, you know what I mean? I was, I was just talking about this too. There was a point in my life where I would say it all the time out loud. And I truly believed it, that 95% of the people that I met were complete morons and had no clue about how to exist as a human being on a planet full of human beings. Right. And I mean, that's pretty simple. And I'm, and I'm not going to say that's not an accurate statistic or I don't believe that now, but <laughs> I will say that I realized that just saying that and thinking that I was putting out that energy and that's what I was getting. I was getting, I was meeting that kind of person. And once I started like understanding and having compassion, like why that might be, and looking for the light in people, like everything changed. It was a whole perspective thing. You know, I, I intentionally changed that perspective and I got what I was looking for. You know? right, right. And also everything brings you to where you are today. So even as an artist, people will say, well, how long did that take you to paint? Or what? I said, you know what? Every painting, I might say to you, I'm going to keep this beginner painting. It might have all my mistakes, but it got me to where I am today. Mm -hmm. So I can see that in a painting, but you don't see it. So I'm not going to let you have that. So you had to have those stepping stones to get you where you are today. That's, That's all. That's totally true. Totally true. And I feel like, at least in my life, and I think if anyone looks back in their life, they can probably find this too. Like all the things that you learn just kind of add up in this library of your skills and your your navigational skills, how you navigate with people, how you navigate situations. And then, you know, how you, you know, for me, it's like computer stuff, like, you know, whatever I'm good at, those were the things that I gathered. And now situations that I get into require all of those skills, like, and that's what makes me right. magic in those situations, right? Um, you know, the whole idea of just show up, which is uh, something that we talk about. Like, if, if you know who you are and what you contribute to the world, all you have to do is show up because then the magic happens wherever you are, whatever you're doing, it happens, right? And if you might just also what you bring from your past life as well. So if you do any past life, like you'll see that you had similar skill set or what I find, if you find someone who's completely compassionate in this life, it doesn't mean they were compassionate in the last life. That means mm. they've learned that lesson to completion. Right. So there's a whole, whole other, you know, so, so let's let's get into some of that stuff. Let's talk. Oh, I did it again. I put the mouse in the corner and my screen goes black, even though I'm still live to you guys. <laughs> I don't see you now. I see you. Um, so so, yeah, let's talk about that. Um, I, I build people, you know, with with what their special gifts are. And I build you as a intuitive psychic medium, uh, intuitive <laughs> artist and psychic medium. So. Tell us what that means. Tell us what a soul portrait is. Show us your studio. Yes, um, such a silly girl. I didn't put a soul portrait in this room, but I have this one. So I do eyes to the soul. So these are so these are spirit paintings. So what I'll do is um, I will channel what your colors are. So for a, a soul portrait, I do more of the images. So the way it came in for me was um, this is my studio. Hello, this is just who I am. Mm -hmm. So here's my art studio. Yay, this is where the classroom is. I'm wow, working with some soul portraits here. So um, this is how my background starts. Here's Picasso. Hi, Picasso. So here's the studio. So you come in here. I've been here uh, 32 years. Um, I'm here in Mineola, and I also teach in other locations as well. Um, so it came in for me that I've been teaching uh, classes in art for whatever, a long time. And I had kids here, and I kept seeing them as angels, and I started drawing them. And my daughter's like, Mom, you can't make your students angels. Like, that's crazy. So my family was like, you're a little off the wall, mom. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even, I don't even watch sci-fi. How do I, what the heck is coming in here? So, wow. um, so then I started seeing like, uh, I don't know, unicorns around people. And then I'd say to them, hello, ring, ring. Can I make a unicorn around you, Mike? Can I make you flying on a unicorn? Like, and then it just started coming in that they started wow. secretly telling me that they were collecting these things, you know? And then, then it started to come together that these are elements of this person that make up their divine blueprint. So then I started seeing uh, key codes on them and um, oh, wow. star beings that came around. So even if I do a painting of you, there might be an image behind your face that you can't see that's other layers. So then right, right. one person called me up and said, um, 
do you know what the painting does? It kind of went into my dream and I started traveling with it. And I'm like, what are you smoking? Like, <laughs> what the hell? So th it started to have its own life. And I was like, I have no idea. So um, these are really give me a lot of pleasure to do them. And I'm not a portrait painter by any means. I'm a flower painter. Right. See this flowers and landscape. This wasn't something. And I've had, you know, different psychics, different mentors say to me, oh, you're going to do this. And I'm like, yeah, you're full of junk. You know what I mean? And then I, just, I like that. I, hold up that one with the eyes again. I like that. Hold it, pull it, pull it, put it close to the screen. I want to. So this is just oh, one beautiful. sample of eyes. So then that's what I'll beautiful. do. Is, so what I'll do is let's say it was you for you, Mike. I will then channel like are these Mike's colors. And so then I'll come in and then what happens is you'll see stuff in here. Oh, yeah. I don't absolutely. even know, like orbs and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I'll ask them, where are the eyes going? And then the message that comes along with it. So that's the eyes to the soul that I'm doing at um, the Healing Learning Arts Center now. Yep. Um, yeah, and I that is beautiful. And I don't know if you see the comments I'm popping up on the screen. That is beautiful. And I love this. Uh, oh no, I can't see any comments because I'm so illiterate here. I don't oh, know. that's all right. That's all right. I'm just, I'm just. Oh, I love this, Lily. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Now I see it. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Well, then, then actually, if you've gone on my Facebook page, I started channeling uh, Mother Mary. So I, I, I recently um, come out of a very toxic, abusive, long-term relationship. So what happened was. I started to look for guidance for myself and mother Mary kept coming in and I have her, uh, this, this particular studio was hit by lightning about 60 years ago. So there's wow. a lot of Metatron energy here. So people have come here and documented it. They have, uh, there's all kinds of portals anyway. So Mary's in the back, her portal. So I started, um, painting her live on Facebook. I just had like a flower painting background mm -hmm. and I said, Oh, I think, I think Mary wants to come in. I'm sorry. This is like glossy. And, that's right. um, no, yeah, that's good. I could see it. That's nice. Arnie says they are beautiful. They're yeah, all, so I just started beautiful. channeling her. So I just, th again, this is not, I didn't go to Catholic school to learn how to do Mary. This is just things that just started coming in. And, yeah. and I just want to talk about that a little bit about people and their creativity. Oh, look, um, Singh is out yeah, let's there. Talk he was, about he that. was at so, that photo shoot. I just saw Singh, um, Singh is out there. He was at the photo shoot. Uh, oh! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love him. He he's says, one of my favorite he, people too. The eyes and the soul are beautiful. He says. Oh, how you doing, Sink? Thank you so much. That's so. Weird. He's such a sweetheart too. He is. He my totally two favorite is. dude. My two favorite dudes from the shoot. <laughs> awesome. Well, another creative person too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah. So I also I also not only do portraits, but I also teach intuitive uh, guidance. I also do uh, readings. I do channelings. I have a star being that comes in. His name is Ishba. Um, I go on and on. My, I had a uh, an animal come to me um, that had um, how should I say this uh, was asexual, had no had no vagina, no penis. Mm -hmm. So that was an alien cat that got documented as far as they went inside to see if there were any parts. Anyway, I have like a lot of crazy things happen to me. So uh, what am I getting into? I'm getting into that everybody has guidance. Everybody has soul intuition. And the way I channel it coming in is through your intuitive side is your creative side, your right side of the brain. There is no time relationship. There's no ego. Mm -hmm. Left side of the brain is ego. So the left side of the brain tells me I have two eyeballs and a nose. And this is how, you know, that the, the eyes are one nose apart. That's your very logical side, two plus two. But the artistic side or the right side of the brain says to me, you are Mike as a whole. I may not know your name, but I know that you're a, a person. Mm -hmm. um, I might uh, know that um, I'm hungry, but I don't really know the recipe of how to cook something for myself. It's, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. And again, how do I know this? Because I had blood poisoning and I had lost part of my memory. So um, I only lost it on one side of the brain. So what, every time they were talking to me, they're like, how would you know how to do this? I was like, well, I couldn't understand. I, I started having slurred speaking. I couldn't explain it to them, but I knew wow. in my brain what was going on. See, when you talk about how everything in a hole in your life puts you where you are today, mm -hmm. I would not replace that experience at all because mm -hmm. it made me a stronger person who I am today. Amazing. I'm able to work with people who've had brain injuries in that right. sense. Right. And so, anyway, so getting back to your intuitive sense is that, this is the part I tell people, like, if you're walking down the block, you kind of have a feeling someone's watching you. Everybody has different senses. I think what happens is we've learned how to dull them. And I'm, I hate to say it, but our phone is a part of our dulling. Mm -hmm. And our social media is part of our dulling. We spend a lot of time on social media and looking to see what's the normal, what Pearson is doing. And we should be, you know, photographing every fart and thing that we do and put it on there. Um, that does not really get you into your intuitive self. Your intuitive right. self is turning the phone off and turning everybody off and just really sitting with the tree against your back 
sort of what people were doing during the pandemic, where they were really just wanting to talk to people face to face and really sure. be present. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I, I totally agree a million percent with you, but I'm going to defend it in a way in that that's kind of what we're doing right here is we're having this conversation and, and it's really for, I'm not for social media, but for people who are looking for, you right, know, right. these kinds of conversations, you know, to put everything in moderation, Mike, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, of course, right. Right, right. of course, you know, we all got to go outside and sit by the ocean. You know, we can't sit in front of the computer screen all the time. And also you need to check in with your Y self. You need to say, you know, if I'm going to do something, Who's the best judge of that but yourself? But if you're not sure, you you wait. I think people become impatient with waiting for the message to come in. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yep, prayer, yep. prayer is requesting and meditation is waiting for the answer to come back, right? Mm -hmm. So um, even myself as a psychic, I'm very um, – so let's say I do a session with you, um, which is a lot of fun when I ask to look into your past life. It looks like a picture frame to me, and then I usually step in and go, let's look. And they usually go, step back. You know what I mean? They crack up. So like, no, no, it, it feels like I'm at a museum. It's so it's so cool. It's like I swear it looks like. Oh, a we got we got to set that up. I've I've tried to do past life regression a, a couple of times, and I'm not a um as much as I I resonate with all of it and and believe on my I do have a deep deep connection with it. I'm I have been told by uh, Kelly and and uh, lots of, lots of great people who are hypnotists. Like I'm not easy. You know, I'm not easy to to put under hypnotists. Although, you know, I certainly have had amazing meditation experiences and experiences where I have undeniably touched another realm. You know what right. I mean? So, so. Well, I guess my answer, my question to that is like, what are you trying um, to achieve? Because I think most of it is for messages. You want to, you want to find out. Your that may be it. That may be the key. I'm really not trying to achieve anything. You know, I mean, I don't, I, I certainly am curious as to what my past life, uh, past lives might say about my current state of being. Um, but kind of like you, like, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in my current state of being right now, you know, and, 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 you know, listen, I, I understand mm -hmm. that I'm not at the, at the destination of knowing it all or whatever, that this is a trip, but I'm pretty content with what I found. So, so, it's not that I'm not curious about it and, and would love to see the, the connection with my current self, but it's like, I'm not digging for it. I think that's, you know, okay. Here, I gotta, I think this is what they're telling me to tell you. Okay. Okay. There's two things. One is um, the one thing you said was what would your past self say about your present self? I don't see it that way. I see it the reverse because we're wiser now, right? Mm -hmm. It would help you are in this lifetime. So you go back to understand how it got you to where you are today. Mm -hmm. So I don't see it that way. I see it as a younger self. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I see it as a younger self. So okay. you're the wise one. And then, right. So the best way I could describe this to you is um, I was in a meditation to visit heaven and heaven has many different levels to it, depending upon what your um, original origin is, where you come from, whether you're a star being, whether you're an earthling, whether you're an angel. So it depends on it. So I'm in the meditation and um, my dad has passed and I wanted to really see him because who else would you want to see but someone that just passed, right? Mm -hmm. So I go into the meditation and I'm in it and um, you know, there's different connections to get there through air, water, anyways, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm up in my little cloud where I am and I said, I want to see my dad. And then in that moment, they said, which dad? And so in that one split second, it was very cool. It looked like I was on the top of a tornado and it went all the way down into different, different past lives. I got to see a dad, a mom, a brother, a sister. Wow. Because after all, in each lifetime, you're not this sex always, right? Right, right, right. Very, very cool. So in that echo of hearing which dad do you want to see, I got to see the whole line. Wow. Really? Wow. That's really what it's about. So it's not right. about, do, does that dad or does that lifetime judge who I am? It's, it's right. I don't know why. It just shows up like a, not a, like a snake, but it's just a right. past life that's all all you simultaneously at the same time. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, and I certainly understand and, I, and I've been told, you know, that um, certain relationships that you have also could be totally different. Somebody who might be exactly. a, romantic, a romantic partner could have been your yeah. sister or your brother or your father or your mother, you know, in another capacity. And you've had a, a relationship that was still that that vibrational connection but in a different capacity, you know, a whole different. And whole also different. people don't realize you don't always come back as human either. Just mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. 
The same. Yeah, no, of, of you know course. I mean, it's, you know, energy is energy. And, and also, because I used to ask this question to Spirit all the time, it's like, so if let's say Mike and I, like you and I obviously have some type of connection, right? Because we're talking now and we have yep. some soul contract together. Is, um, all right, let's say, you know, we have a romantic bond and, you know, one partner leaves before the other. Do they wait? Because I used to ask them this, do they wait? Because remember, I had a lot of conversation about death my whole life because that was very fast. You know, do they wait for you? Like, what, what is going on? Mm-hmm. And um, because you are living in more than one simultaneous reality, it's kind of selfish to think that that person is not going to go move on because they got, right. as I say, they got shit to do. Right, <laughs> right, right. Or not have an infinite number of iterations going on at the same yes, time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. They're not like waiting for you. Because when people would say to me, oh, you know, is, can I, is so-and-so coming in for me? And I'm like, well, hello, they might be a little busy like i just i just want to say <laughs> they got things to do they're not gonna be like waiting around right, right, in may right. you know right Right. It's pretty, I don't know, I find it pretty funny. You know? I think that's great. No, I mean, energy is energy and, and you know, who can really define it or control it? If you connect to it at that moment, you you connect to it at that moment, right? I mean, um, I do want to uh, bring up uh, 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 your website here for a second um, because there is some, you have a nice slideshow going of some of your work. Uh, so that's- Oh, thank you for that. Oh, thank you. I don't have to take anything out. Uh, also want to pop up the banner, I mean, the uh, URL there at the bottom, lisafazioartist.com. Um, so if you're interested in, in learning more about anything Lisa's talking about here, um, you can find more about her there and uh, different events that she's going to be at and uh, classes that she Well, gives. we have so many events coming up. We're doing hypnosis and art. We're doing, I'm doing uh, tuning forks, and we're going to do a Mother Mary workshop. We're going to have a whole Mother Gaia um celebration like i said because it's so great that like there's a there is actually a growing spiritual community um you know that that you can do these events and 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 know that you know your tribe will show up you know or people who at least um maybe people you haven't met but still you know that they're you know you know them they're familiar when they show up isn't that the truth i I have to tell you that i love that part well you had said it earlier about the friendly and not friendly i make my world friendly Mm-hmm. You know what? I, I just came back from Florida and someone said to me, I said hello to everybody. They went, oh, you're in Florida, so you're friendly. I'm like, hell no, I'm friendly everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I think that people, you know, again, people, all of those layers and, and that stuff that I was talking about, I don't think people really understand um, their own accountability and the idea that everything is a choice, right? I think exactly. that, you know, a lot of people, you know, mm-hmm. the situation I was having, uh, you know, with a friend of mine, he said that his cynicism wasn't a choice of how he is. It was a response to the world. And I'm like, but no, you're, I tried to explain to him that he was choosing it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, your reaction is your job. Right, exactly. He got so upset at me. We had such a fight. And then he's like, you know, oh, you always profess that, you know, p- positive energy will get positive things. Well, you're putting out positive energy to me. How do you explain this? You know, screw off. I'm angry at you. I don't, you know, and I'm like, I'm, I explain it that this is your response and it's a reflection of you, not me. You know what I mean? It's like. Right, right. But I, wanted, what I just want to touch about the positivity. I, I mean, I'm not positive all the time. Right. I'm gonna be, if I'm driving past you and I'm in a pissed off mood, I might cut you off. I'm right. going to be honest. I, I think that's the thing that people like is that I'm really real. If I'm having a crappy day, my friends are watching now. They know I've been through a hard time. I boohoo. Sure. Everybody sure. boohoos. I think you have to really just move through all the energy. Of, we're here to experience all of all of our emotions, right? Because love Absolutely. is more what's on the other side, right? Yeah. So, hello, if I'm going to be angry, I'm going to be angry. And then yeah. I'm going to let it pass. I think it's really a matter of how much you wallow in something that doesn't serve you. And then you wonder why you have X, Y, Z going on. There so, go. yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> you, you hit it on the head. It's, it's you know, <laughs> your response is, is how you wallow, you know, like, or if you choose to wallow in it, you know what I mean? It's like you're giving it energy, whatever it is. If it's good, if it's bad, you're the one who's deciding, you know, to to talk about it right and carry the baggage well yeah. I mean, and you know what if you want to talk about it for five minutes then you have five minutes i've had friends where i'm like i'm gonna bitch for an hour i'm gonna bitch for an hour if that's what i really need but i think that everybody has to give themselves the permission to feel their feelings through completion absolutely and and do it in a way of whatever like again you could do it through art you could do it through movement right. music you could do it through movement Um, and you know what you could do with shitty also you could eat a whole bag of Doritos I don't care you could do it totally and people and people who profess positivity aren't 
always happy, even though they're, right. they're talking. It's just that that's what they choose to talk about and choose to, you know, kind of try to spread. And, you know, we, we all have our moments. Listen, I'm not always like getting out of bed like, oh, yeah, it's a new day. Let's go. You know, yeah. and, you know, I'd like to maybe in my head, you know, but. <laughs> uh, and we're humans and we're having a human experience. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, man. Um, so you, did you want to uh, show us around? Your, oh, you did show us around your studio already. Well, yeah, I'm just, I guess I could, um, we Anything have crystal wire wrapping. I know you got all excited. You're like, what can I share? What do I need to do? Well, I'm it's doing some art. This is our art for our um, our um, hypnosis class with uh, Kelly. Oh, yeah. Tell and us what that's like, all about. Maybe doing like, well, that's going to be about your inner child. So remember back in the day when you did like finger painting and nobody sure. told you how to do it the right way or anything? So we're going to be doing hypnosis. We're going to like chill out, relax. And then we're going to come out and start doing some painting. And everybody who registers uh, needs to give me a profile photo of them so I can draw it out. And then they're going to have a little fun with, with uh, sketching there. Wow, well, that's what awesome. Else? Then I have, um, this is my crystal wire wrapping. We do crystal wire wrapping here. We're nice. going to be doing, I always try to come up with something with brave wings. She flies. Mm -hmm. I try to come up with different things to do uh, that has to do with art and meditation. Um, nice. Yeah, so those are, and then, I, like I said, I don't have samples of the other classes that I'm doing, but this is sort of uh, a little bit of uh, studio life. I love your studio. What else, could people, what else could people want to know about artists? I don't know. We clean the house on occasionally. <laughs> we don't just clean. I have to still, I have three cats. I still have to do litter. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. Well, that's what life is. But yeah, uh, and then this is the other cool thing that people don't know about. So this is not to look at my part. But this is a mirror above. So when you sit in a demonstration mirror, this is for watercolorists, not oil painters. Can you see? So if you sit down at the table, you get to see what the teacher is doing. So it kind of looks like it's a cooking show, but it's not. See how cool that is? That's great. So yeah. It's not very fun shui, but I have one there and I have one in my No, my, that's my awesome. Classroom. I have one in my office studio. Which is super messy. And I, I love I love how passionate you are about um, not only what you do, but about creating these classes and, and sharing it with people and, and helping them open up into their own abilities. You know what I mean? It's very much like, you know, uh, psychics who are trying to help other people's psychic mediumship classes. You know what I mean? Trying right. to like let everyone know what's inside themselves. You know, um, it's so important. You know, I was I know you you certainly. Um, subscribe to the same philosophy uh, uh about self-love and how important that is and really that's you know i think that's where freedom starts you know um the ability to be self-care yeah because i think people don't give themselves permission uh mm -hmm. to sit down i think what happens is we come up with formulas you know what i mean oh five minutes of meditation and then i'm like i look at them and go i don't know does it have to be five minutes mm -hmm. like and what is meditation anyway mm -hmm. is it quiet and go oh mm -hmm. Right. And put yourself in that pretzel position that I can never get out of. Like, <laughs> where did you like even even for like the painting? Like, what what did where did you get this norm from? Where did you where did that come from? Totally. In fact, I, Mike, if you took a class at me, oh, here's Picasso. He wants to say hello, hey, Picasso. Um, there's no there's no drawing right. that that drives most of my students crazy. I'm like, no, we're gonna do because um, an oil painting. Okay, the difference is, let's say these are this particular this painting, right? You do a sketch ahead of time. And you're going to say you're going to be wings. But when you do a watercolor class, at least with me, and mm -hmm. I teach the creative process, we're going to do the colors. And then we're going to say, what is it interpreted to be? So are we seeing something and then you carve it out. So that's how life is. So are you either carving it out to be the way you want it to be? Or are you sketching it out first and you need to do all the planning? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go on vacation, I get it. Are you going to plan and say, well, it's on Monday, we're going to do this, this and this. But are you leaving enough space in between Think about it. Even your everyday life. Are you giving yourself enough space in between to really be truly present and to make it up as you go along? Mm -hmm. That means like you and I go to the city together and we say we're going to go see the tree. But all of a sudden we turn and we look down the block and then we see a bunch of people singing. So are we going to walk down there and check out the singing or are we going to just go see the tree? Because that's what right. we said we're going to do. Da, 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 da. So I think in life you need to be a little bit more open for possibilities of change, of things that might be exciting. Maybe spirits knocking on your door and sending you a little message. I don't know. But that's how you make yourself happy when you're not so rigid. At least you have a little bit of but a little bit of flexibility. You get what I'm saying? I think it's good. Totally. To have yeah, totally. I totally get what you're saying. And and again, it's it seems so simple, I think, to you and me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But 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 we both also can see a lot of people struggle with it. And I guess, you know, that's why we like to kind of share our gifts and our 
our love and our light, you know, and and, and be out of the box. Like yeah, your your yeah. photography when mm -hmm. you photograph those people mm -hmm. with all the different images on their body mm -hmm. was phenomenal. I was like, I love it. It's so out of the oh, box. Thank you. But that thank but you. that didn't come from Google. That came from Mike's Google here. Uh, yes, I mean, it, yes, it did. But, uh, you know, I saw a photographer doing some stuff with projectors, and that inspired me to start doing it. Exactly. Um, but I Isn't certainly... Isn't that how it works? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely, a million percent. So there's uh, there's another photo I was look, trying to find uh, the original one, but I, I only found this. This is a photo that... Uh, of, of me standing <laughs> in front of in front of one of your paintings. Uh, this was at the. Uh, that was adorable. That was at the uh, the New Life Expo. Oh, I, believe. I love it. Um, but I also do want to share something. Now, this uh, I don't think, and and I hate to say it, but I don't think that you're actually in this. Um, but you were there, and so I want to just share this because sure, sure. I feel like uh, it's something we can kind of reminisce on together. Let me just see here, Chrome tab. Uh, and or share audio. Okay, I want to just make sure that people can hear it. Um, so this was, I'm not going to play the whole thing. This is like the second half of this video uh, that was taken uh, the behind the scenes of that photo shoot that we were talking about. So it was at this, this girl Jen's apartment or house. That was the, uh, the photo shoot of the Facebook group that we had. Who made this, Mike? You did? I never saw this. What's that? I never saw this. Oh, no? Hmm. Yeah, this was uh, Trevor was my friend who was filming behind the scenes. And you also gave the women the freedom to pose they they where they felt comfortable. I remember the shoot. Yeah, you yeah. asked them. Yeah. I mean, now that people need to know this wasn't pre-rehearsed. You yeah, all oh, yeah, absolutely. This was all on the spur of the moment. We, right. you know, the the idea of the end of Warrior was all we had. Like we knew we were gonna. I had done a, the Women of Armageddon calendar, so that's I think why I was asked to do this because we knew we were gonna do this kind of warrior theme. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just such a such a beautiful, beautiful experience. It was. Um, it really was. But that, but that's that's a true example of the creative process, where again, you had an idea, a very loose idea, and then you intuitively, because you had everybody had their own idea. Think right. about it, even people when you photograph them, Mike. I'm sure you've had it like they, you know, shoot my best side. You know right. what I mean? Right, every, right, right. Everybody was really free to allow. Right whatever everybody wanted to do intuitively. Right. So yeah, definitely. And I think, I think the thing um, that I love about photography and kind of makes, makes my work what it is, is I don't look at it like I'm, I'm the photographer and I'm doing the work. I look at it as a collaboration and that was a collaboration of many, many people's energies. You know what I mean? And that's what I think worked with you as well. When you were doing the painting, it was just like, you know, I think, uh, you know, as, as empaths or intuitive people, you know, you kind of connect to that energy in a certain way, you know what I mean? And, and uh, it's, it's pretty significant. You know? Well, also I want to say some of the women that day were not feeling well. 
either. Mm -hmm. And I remember you had you had to not have they were all different stages of struggling. If anybody doesn't know what endometriosis is, it's basically tumors Mm -hmm. that are formed from the uh, female reproduction parts. And so these women had to decide whether to not have children, you know what I mean? Whether Because that's what really the doctors were giving as an alternative was to remove all the reproduction organs. Mm -hmm. And because that was the choice I did, I had children already. Mm -hmm. Um, And now my own daughters are 31 and 27 and they they know now it's hereditary. Because in the beginning, my daughters were like, oh, I don't have to worry about it. I'm like, no, you do. And so now there's so much more information about it. So Right. Yeah. No. And the women suffered silently. I suffered. I went to many yep. doctors, suffered silently late. You're crazy. So yeah, those women were warriors in that shoot as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so grateful for that. So grateful for meeting you that day and, and yeah, seeing you, you over the years, you know, and then in the, you know, I'm, it's weird. I, I say spiritual community and it's like, I kind of cringe a little cause I don't like the, the terminology and labels, but you know, it really is, is a, a tribe of people who, you know, believe in loving and respecting each other. You know what I mean? Like on, on the real basic level of it all. And, and, right. you know, we all have different levels of understanding energy and, and our accountability for it. Um, but that's, that's really it. So do you have any, uh words of wisdom or words of advice for my audience before we wrap uh, up? I would say um take the time for yourself to really give yourself a break. I think that people are really hard on themselves. Really just go back to your sort of like your inner child when you just had that day where it was the perfect day where you just went to the park and you just really enjoyed the sunshine, taking your shoes off and putting your feet in the grass. Like go back to that kind of Uh, kind of a feeling. Do things that make you happy. Um, If you're not happy, then you need to make yourself happy. Look in the mirror and look around. And and that could just start with, you know, going to the food store and picking out something new to eat that you have never had. You know, you know, getting excited about taste buds all over again, going to the gym, trying a new piece of equipment, maybe just getting new sneakers. I think people just need to give themselves permission to redo I every minute, every yeah, day. Yeah, you know, and I think that was something I was thinking earlier. Janet Tafola is out there. What's up, Janet? Uh, I haven't seen you in a while, but she says, you're awesome, both Hi, of Janet. you. Thank you so much. Uh, MB Necroto is out there saying watercolor. Hey, was Mary, Beth. Uh, Mary Beth. Mary Beth, MB. Um, and now I just lost my thought. What was I saying? Oh, my goodness. We were talking about, like, just giving yourself permission to really um, be in the moment of just, you know, being happy in that moment, whatever that little moment could be an hour of the day, the moment, you sure. know, one minute of the day and just really reactivating your yourself. Like I wouldn't know what, you know, you need to change your food routine or your walking day. You'd be surprised a simple thing like driving down a different path or just giving yourself an extra five minutes of whatever it is that you need. How about right. like, you know, it's not even the five minutes of sleep, Mike. Maybe it might be five minutes extra in the shower just to relax a little bit. People don't realize they can give themselves permission right. to, to just be kinder to themselves five minutes at a time. Right, right. Oh, they, yeah. Be more what, I, I, what I was going to say is this. I was just thinking about this. You said you said the thing about, you know, it could be as simple as going to the supermarket and getting something you never tried to eat, you know, new food. Um, and that is that I feel like part of the layers that have been put on us about how we're supposed to function and what it's supposed to be like is this idea of a comfort zone, right? So I feel like we are always like, okay, I need to find a comfort zone. Once I find that comfort zone, I'm good, right? And you find the comfort zone and and it feels like you're good, right? Because that's why they call it a comfort zone because you're comfortable, but you're not growing. You're just at this, you know, you're just stagnating. Um, I feel like that's what comfort zones are. Um, and right. not, listen, there's not, I'm not saying there's not, right, which is fine good to be comfortable. It's good to be comfortable. You know what I mean? But like comfortable pair of shoes, jeans, but you know what? As soon as spirit laughs at that spirit says, ah, and then they throw you a little wrench and then they go, Hey, you really thought that you learned about that relationship. We're going to find another person that presents that. <laughs> people always think, Oh, you're just going to do this. Cut them out. Oh no, no, no. There'll be another one that looks just like that in a different head. <laughs> That's right. Totally. Totally. It's fine. And again, if you approach it with the same thing, if you had, if you were in your life, happy remember the happy tree guy that used to paint the happy trees you know and oh the happy trees that if you remember him yeah Gerald bob ross bob totally ross. yeah, yeah. Bob ross. i don't know if we're gonna do that i mean he used to smoke a lot of weed but anyway <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he had a lot of great, great philosophies. You know, he was he a did. painter. No, you know, nothing's an accident. Happy accident. Oh, look, we yes. made a mistake. Oh, let's make it work. Yes. Let's work. You know, such a really yes. a lot of so many people look up to 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 Bob Ross, and and he really is like a 
philosophical teacher in a lot of ways. No, he really was. If you look at the history of the documentary, I mean, he really, he really was. So yeah, yeah. no, but that's cool. like you drive down the wrong block. Oh, look at that! I, I found a new place. Blah, blah blah. Yeah, you just have to have. There that. you go. Make the best of it. Silver lining, always. Silver lining. Yeah, that's says, my thing. Uh, Silver lining. Give yourself permission. Permission to uh to sleep because tomorrow's another day to finish what didn't get done today. <laughs> that's right it's always patiently waiting for you isn't it <laughs> right and i've got the the fire department outside it sounds like um but i guess that's the the siren for 10 o'clock and yes, uh, perfect. you've been amazing i hope you had oh, fun yeah much love yes i did yeah. Mike, always so good to see yeah, you thank told, you for asking me thank i you. told you it was gonna be fun and easy it's no i didn't use too many big <laughs> words i hope um, <laughs> Really good. So um, I'm gonna just put you backstage. I'm gonna say goodbye and thank you, everybody. Uh, thank I'll you for back. coming in. Mwah. Much love to you guys. Come visit. Love we'll to see you. Later, awesome. Uh, another great hour of intentional conversation, creating an intentional moment with someone I love and someone I want to learn about and give space to. Lisa Fazio, artist. Go check her out if you resonated with anything that we had tonight. Uh, Janet's out there saying, love you, love the show. I love you, Janet, so much for being here since the beginning. Uh, Deborah's out there too. Uh, love to you, Lisa. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, and Lily, another amazing show. Thank you so much. I love to hear that people who have been here from the beginning they still think that this is amazing because I certainly do. I love being here with you guys. I love that you come here and and spend your time with me. Uh, and and it's just it's just an honor. Awesome. I will see you guys next week. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I don't have my calendar in front of me. Uh, I think next week is Gemma Starr, who is this amazing woman from Australia who I saw on Jesse Howell's show. And, and I just resonated like, as, you know, you watch someone talk and you're just like, oh my God, I got to talk to that person. So she's next week. Uh, I will see you guys then. Peace. <laughs>